The heart of God is so tender. He rejoices when a sinner comes home. So what happens? He forgives his son, restores him to his household. And so when we think about that and think about how God is restoring today, there are four other words I want to give you, four other words that describe what God has for us. And the first one is forgiveness. It doesn't make any difference what you've done. Watch this carefully. You may have said, but I've just been so mean and rotten and ungodly and disrespectful, and I've been on drugs, I've been a prostitute. On and on and on you go. Let me tell you something. You can't name anything God won't forgive you for. That doesn't mean there's not a penalty for sin. But listen, God's forgiveness, if we confess our sins, that is, we agree with God that we've lived in sin and disobeyed Him. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just, always trustworthy. Faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the promise of God. That's the first step. Secondly, acceptance. He not only forgives us of our sin, He accepts us as the way we are. He accepts you one of His children. Watch this carefully. You don't have to get all straightened out to get God's acceptance. You come to Him pleading as a sinner, asking for forgiveness, and His acceptance is on the basis of what He did at the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, He paid your sin debt in full no matter what you've done or how long you've done it. Forgiveness of our sins, acceptance by Him, and restoration. That is, He restores us. What does He restore? He restores our sense of self-worth. He restores our sense of dignity. He restores our attitude about other people. He restores everything about us. Restoration. It's not enough just the forgiveness of our sins, but He has to straighten out some other things in our life that got twisted by sin and wrong thinking. And then following all of that, of course, is rejoicing. When a person comes to Christ, all of these simple words describe what happens in their life. Forgiveness, acceptance, restoration, and rejoicing. And in the parable, they had a big party, a big celebration. This is a simple but awesome story because it's God's message that no matter how wicked and sinful and vile you've been, God is willing to forgive you, not because you deserve it, not because you've done this or will do that, but because when Jesus went to the cross, He took the sin debt of the world upon Him. And anyone who comes to Him asking for forgiveness, surrendering their life to Him, will be forgiven, their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you will forever be a child of God. Doesn't mean you're not going to sin anymore. And you may be saying, well, I know that I'll sin again. Then what? It doesn't mean that you'll never sin again, but it means this. You have a relationship to God that's not separated. You have a relationship to Him that is like this. He will forgive you of your sin when you confess it and repent of it. If you sin against God as a believer, is there a penalty? Yes, there is. But you're a child of God. And so the grace of God wraps around us. We're always a child of God. And there are people who say that once you're saved, you sin against God, you've got to be saved again. That's not salvation. There's no assurance in that. Because sometimes we sin against God, little things. We call them little. We don't maybe intend to do or we hurt. All kind of things we do in life. And we ask God to forgive us because we don't want anything in life. It doesn't suit who He is and who, he, and who we are. Does God forgive us? Yes, He does. Watch this. This is the awesome power of the death of Jesus. Every person, from Adam to the last person who will ever live, their salvation, their acceptance before God, all goes back to one thing, and that's the cross of Jesus Christ. That's the payment for our sin, and that payment is sufficient for all eternity. 